Mudroomers! It is Carmen here with Mako and today we're going to go over our glaze profile for one of our classic stoneware glazes, Oyster. Oyster is available in both 16 ounce pints for brushing as well as 5 pound bags for dipping. On the label here, you'll want to check out the side panel, which showcases our AP seal as well as our dinnerware safety recommendation. We have our lot number, which you'll want to report if you have any technical issues. This glaze has a firing range from cone 5 up to cone 10. All of our samples are fired to cone 6 on a white stonework clay body, so anything varying from that could possibly look different from the tile. So as always, we do recommend to test our glazes in your own personal practice. On the back here, we have our firing results, basic application instructions, suggestions and tips, as well as safety information. So definitely make sure to check out that label for all of the details. During today's glaze profile review, I'm going to go ahead and apply some oyster onto a tile. I'm going to apply it just like I did these ones here, doing one, two, and three coats just to showcase what a good application is. So as I've done in other profile videos, I do have a brush recommendation. Here are, are our two brushes that I really like to use for stoneware glazes. Uh, here I have the uh, 140 number 4 fan, or here's the 144 number 4 fan, and this is the RB140 number 8 fan. Both of these are really nice natural fiber brushes. They plump up really well um, with glaze, so it's really nice to use for glaze application. So I'll go ahead and fully load my brush. I really like to dip just the whole thing in there. And then I will just spread the glaze across the surface. So when you're applying glaze, you really want to layer it on. You want to build up of the material to create a reaction when it all melts. That's how you get a nice uh, firing result. So definitely lay that glaze on there. If your brush is sticking or pulling at all like that, you want to apply uh, more more glaze onto your brush. So that's one coat there. I'm going to go ahead and go over some of this and then we'll apply more um, throughout the rest of the video. So first I'll go over kind of our standard here. Right here we have our cone six results. I've got one, two, and three coats. Oyster is a really, really nice semi, semi gloss, I guess glaze. Uh, you can see as it gets heavier it becomes glossy and uh, has this kind of gray purple color to it. So this glaze breaks really really well over texture and one, two, and three coats. Once you get up to three coats you're really building up this brown here so it's kind of like a sweet spot showcasing this um, glossy variation. So it's actually like a middle range of coats that shows it being glossy whereas as you get heavier you're going to start getting matte and uh, this brown variation. So that's kind of cool one two and three coats and then on the back here we have three coats so by itself this glaze does not have a lot of mobility but it does add some two combinations. So you can see it does have movement based on kind of its performance how it breaks over texture. And here we have our cone 5 results. So for cone 5, you're really missing out on some of this gray lavender variation. It's basically just kind of like a brown satin mat that uh, breaks over texture. And then on the back we have three coats. So again, you get a lot more variation when you're firing this to cone 6. And then we have our cone 10 results. So here's three coats at cone 6 and three coats at cone 10. This glaze, or cone 10 reduction. So this glaze gets a lot darker. This matte is very, very smooth. Um, and as it builds up, you can see you get some of that gloss and we even ended up with the drips. So it does look like you could get some mobility with this glaze at cone 10, but it's not uh, 
a highly, highly mobile product there either. All right, we'll go ahead and do our second coat here. So I've got my tile here. I'm gonna go ahead and load my brush, maybe a little less this time since the surface is a little smaller now. I'm doing just the two thirds over here. All right, laying that glaze on. There's my second coat. Here we have our flux results. So here with flux, I've layered two coats of flux under oyster. I've got light flux here and dark flux here. You can see that kind of purple variation really comes out with the light flux. It really brightens it up as well as adds a lot of mobility. Like I said, this glaze does add mobility to combinations. So when you're laying it with flux, it's kind of extra, extra mobile. or really likely to have a lot of movement. And then the dark flux here, you can see the dark, the dark flux by itself here and then kind of how it interacts with the oyster here. So let's say you applied kind of a thinner coat of this dark flux than I did. You might have a lot less of this and a lot more of this. Um, since I had, since I applied glaze pretty heavy, the two coats had a lot of mobility and the flux really spread out here. And on the back here, I've got two coats of flux over 110. So here you can kind of see more of the interaction. Here it's like where the flux was underneath 110, everything moved down and interacted here. Whereas here, since the flux was over the uh, oyster, that just interacted the whole time. It didn't kind of like slide down at all. So that happens a lot with flux when you're applying it underneath with certain glazes. You'll kind of have this area where you applied it where everything just moves off of it, which kind of makes sense. Like since the flux moves, everything that was on top of it moved down. Um, so I hope that <laughs> makes sense to you guys as well. Um, and then the back here, we have flux at cone 10 with oyster. This is applied the same as over here. So we have flux over oyster. Um, and this is still a beautifully smooth mat. You definitely have a, a way different color space here, um, but it does have a really, really nice finish and surprisingly doesn't really move way more than cone six, which is not really what I would expect, honestly. All right, check this guy out. All right, I could put a coat on if I was rushing, but I've got time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for the next thing. We'll go over our um, alternative clay bodies. So these were all fired to cone six with a drop hold and a slow cool, like I've been doing all of our alternative clay bodies. Um, maybe on the lighter or the brown speckled clay we could get away with just a hold or but the slow cool seems like it's kind of necessary on here you can kind of see the texture it is still very smooth smooth though it's like a little bit matte but you don't have really surface issues it just kind of creates an interesting texture so this is the dark brown here we have the speckled brown and then the speckled white so this looks pretty good pretty nice on all of these i really think this is really interesting over here you can see it lightens up as it gets heavier too so this is three coats on these. Okay, I'll go ahead and do my last coat on here. Have a loaded brush, kind of wiping that extra off, and then just getting my third coat, just spreading it like peanut butter. So there's one, two, and three coats. So that will have a fired result looking very similar to this. So I do recommend everyone testing our glazes at one, two, and three coats on your own clay body with your own hand just to give you kind of a better understanding of their performance because there could be variation um, with any of this um, in your own environment. So always keep that in mind. And here we have some combinations. So this is Cinnabar over Oyster. We do have a little bit of mobility here, but nothing too crazy. Cinnabar is a pretty stable glaze, so I'm not surprised it didn't move too much, but Oyster did add a little bit of mobility there. Here we have Green Opal over Oyster. This is kind of one of my favorite things this does in combination, is it brings this beautiful purple in. Um, 
that's kind of like the undertones that are expressed a lot of the time with combinations with this and I'm a freak for purple and I just absolutely love it. So this brown variation with the purple here is really, really nice. Again, this is green opal layered with oysters. So the fact that there's no green here kind of blows my mind. Uh, but this is really, really nice. And here we have azurite with, layered over top of oyster. So on all these combos, we do two coats of each glaze. Azurite does add a lot of mobility to combinations as well as oyster does. So this one we actually wiped up a little bit more and it still ran down into our little catch here. But beautiful layering. I love the matte and gloss variation in the same combo, which Azurite often brings into combinations. And then here we have white gloss over oyster. So of course, I'm not surprised that this didn't really move at all. White gloss is very, very stable along with all of our gloss glazes. But I do think that this variation or modeling that's happening is really, really interesting where it kind of looks like it's bubbling with this beige sort of browns, a little bit of purples and this white contrasting with it is really, really nice. So again, not too much movement. So you can find these along with many other glaze combinations on our glaze combo gallery on our website. So check that out. It's totally searchable there. Um, you can find distributor information, where to buy products on our website as well. We have a distributor page where you can find your closest Mako distributor to get your product from, as well as all of our technical information. So if you do need to contact our technical team, definitely check out our website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom there, that will have our technical contact information. So as always, please leave questions in our comment section. I love getting feedback about these videos and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this today and stay tuned for more glaze profile videos. We're trying to kind of build up the gallery here to help you make more informed decisions about products that you use in your practice. So thanks again, guys. And as always, make it Mako.